All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zeno Killer from Ta, coming at you with the Ghost of Tarsonis Persistent World Metal Game. This match is between Immortalists. Yeah, what was that game between Master of and Immortalists? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know I got it. It was the uh, the Terran player. Yeah, Odin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, up in our top right-hand corner is Angel of Sin in the blue trunks, and in the bottom left-hand corner is our Protoss player in the red trunks, playing on, of course, Zelnaga Caverns. And if you've played the latter, you're very, very, very familiar with this map. A nice two-player map. You don't usually have long macro games on this map, but every once in a while there is. Uh, it's really nice if you're Protoss, you can come down the uh, secret hallway here place a pile on and do a lot of shenanigans with that. So you always want to make sure you check for pylons when you're playing the crafty Protoss. It looks like a Protoss player is going to come into the Zerg base. Uh, it doesn't see any sort of, you know, six pool shenanigans going on. Let's see what he does there. Not a whole lot per se. And we're going to see him sort of exit off to the map. Maybe put up a pile on out there. Ah, oh, looks like he's going to go in for another look. He's building a gateway. And getting an assimilator. Nothing too crazy there. Our Zerg player is getting a spawning pool extractor at the same time. Oh, I'm not sure if that was 14 or 15. Pretty regular Zerg play. Finally, he's going to sick a drone on there. Oh, he wasn't. Hmm, I wonder where he was going. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to see our Protoss player just sort of park here, keep an eye on that. Reserve player is going to do a little scouting. Might not be able to squeeze in there. We can see the Cyber Core coming down. I think there's a gap there. I would assume so. Which will allow our Zerg player to get in. He's also got the Overlord. He's going to park out there. And that's pretty much it for the moment. Both players pretty equal on food, pretty equal on harvesters. See a little, it looks like he's going to steal his five minerals and take off. We can see a second gas out, so we might see a tech heavy build. And now he's going to go hide in the corner. Oh, doesn't look like he's going to hide in the corner just yet. But it does look like he's going to be trapped in there. So that zealot almost takes another swipe at him. It'll take him three swipes to get that drone. He got two out there, but right now that drone and his five minerals are trapped. So as soon as that stalker comes out, it's going to be game over for that drone, no matter how long it takes him to heal. <laughs> He's going to barely damage the shield there. So our Zerg player has taken his second base. Hasn't built too many Zerglings, though. He's just kind of doing some research. Checking for pylons in the corner. He's got nice overlord spread to keep an eye on things. He's even got one out here, which unfortunately he's going to lose very slowly to our stalker. He's going to try to hide over here, but he's just not going to make it. So now we've got two stalker zealot. It doesn't look like they're going to move across the map, though, and try and put any pressure down. we got a forge coming out, so we can see some canenigans. We have a twilight council. And another gateway. So that's an interesting mix of buildings. I'm not sure exactly what that means for our Protoss player, but it should be interesting. Zerg player is going to pop up another tech level, throw out some more overlords, but doesn't really have any ground units yet. Which is interesting. And now you can see even more overlord scouting. All right, our Protoss player is going to be able to see that there is a natural expansion out there. Nothing to deal with. Zerg player, keep an eye on a Protoss player. So now that we have a Twilight Council, yep, Blink Stalkers. We have a gateway and another gateway, so we're going to have sort of a three-gate Blink Stalker go-round as Warp Gate slowly researches. Now we have another pylon. So right now we've got three gateways. He's, uh, hmm, looks like he's chrono-boosting out the... Blink research a little bit faster than the Warp Gate research. Not such a big deal. Our Zerg player is Roach Warning. 
war warreninging he's spine crawling and he's overseering interesting combination it's also fun he also did a little bit of creep spread to connect his main and his natural always a good idea a little bit of a drone transfer going on and a bunch of lings in production so our zerg player wasn't the subject of any early aggression which allowed him to sort of set his base and I was going to move into the mid game doing pretty well for himself. He's actually spreading a little creep here, a little creep there, a little creep there for some reason, I guess to keep vision, I'm not sure, or just to check for sort of any hidden expansions. Our Protoss player is slowly building up his units. He doesn't look like he's going to expand though, which is going to hurt him sooner rather than later. We can see a nice bit of creep spread going on, but our Protoss player is going to start falling behind a little bit. He's only building photon cannons at the moment, and he doesn't have any pylons outside of his base, so that's going to hurt him in any sort of midfield encounters. He's going to pop up and grab the Zelnaga Watchtower and do a little bit of a move out. He hasn't masked up his units, though, so that's going to hurt him. He's not going to be able to select them all and blink them all together. He's really got to get a nice tight group, to group together to make forward pile and he's got to get a nice group together to make everything fit. Now is he going to do the death blink where he, oh, he's going to sort of push and fall back, push and fall back. Uh, he was able to supply block but right now Angel of Sin has a tremendous advantage. He's got you know, 70 food over the 44 food but if Immortalist can do some damage there it will definitely put him in better position. He's attacking Blinking out, he's now got a pile on up, he can warp in more units, but he's still at a little bit of a disadvantage. He's going to try to work his way around to get... Mineral Line wasn't able to do it, and that is a lot of roaches. So now he's going to slowly blink down, and uh, he split his force in half, which is not a good idea. He's also got idle probes, so what he really needs to do is he needs to take this little uh, pressure here and expand behind it, but he's not doing that at the moment. But he's going to be able to do a little bit of damage to our Zerg friend here. Doesn't have any upgrades yet, though. That would be a good idea. But right now, all he's doing is attacking. He's not expanding behind it or anything like that. And he's actually switching to Dark Templars, which is going to be interesting. He just He's going to need a little bit better of an economy support. He's going to need to grab an expansion. Because right now, even though he's being attacked, our Zerg player has jumped up to 84 food. And our Protoss player has actually fallen down to 53 from 70. He loses a probe in there unnecessarily. So right now his stalkers, they're doing a very good contain on him, but right now our Zerg player isn't under that much pressure and is able to definitely uh, expand. Right now we see a Nexus and a Pylon going down. So that'll help. We finally see the Dark Shrine. It's finished. So in terms of harvesters, right now it's 42 to 24, which is very telling. Without a second base, without anything, we can see that our Zerg player continues to increase his food supply without, you know, a little bit of damage being done here, but it's not its not game-ending damage, it's more harassment. And as that number of roaches continues to build, it's going to get even worse. Our Protoss player definitely needs to start building more units, and faster. He needs better production facilities for that. So right now he's you know he's not building any more gateways. He's only on the gateways. He can't. He needs to finish up with that nexus. Ah, oh, he's just losing stalkers unnecessarily. <laughs> uh, the roaches are a little bit out of position, though, so if they're not careful, they're going to get lost. But those stalkers are definitely on their last leg. So he's going to lose the contain at half the food, and that's going to be difficult. But he does have his second base here. He's building cannons. And he's got some Dark Templar, which is good. But he's not going to be able to win the game with that. So a Zerg player, even though he was under pressure, managed to expand. He's dropping creep tumors. He's got a nice big army there. He's got festers. 
doesn't have fungal growth yet, but he's... Well, he should be researching it. He's building another Evo chamber. And now we see a little bit more of a tech switch. So he built a Twilight Council. He's building a Robo Bay. And he has a Dark Shrine. So right now, Immortalisk is building just about everything he can. But unfortunately, on two bases, it's very difficult for him to finance that much tech. <laughs> Even at two changelings in his base. He has to take care of those real quick. I can see the Overseer. Is he going to suicide in or not? Hmm. going to drop another changeling. And so he should be able to, if he makes it all the way through here, see the Dark Shrine, and he does. That's going to be trouble. He even sees the Robo Bay. Also going to be trouble. So right now, our Zerg player knows that there are going to be Dark Templar coming, so we can definitely see him to build a couple more Overseers and things like that. Our Protoss player took down the gold rocks there, so hopefully he'll build the gold, which will definitely help him get a little bit more of an economic advantage right now. It's still, and he's actually caught up, it's 44 to 38. Not bad, not bad, but our Zerg player continues to be almost double the amount of food. Right now he's going to build a whole bunch more overlords. And he's taking his third base and his fourth base, so if our Protoss player doesn't do something here soon. He's going to be four bases to two against a fully maxed out Zerg player. He's going to be in a tremendous amount of trouble. He's taking this gold, which will help. He's moving his units out there, but a lot of those stalkers are pretty heavily damaged. He did scout the uh, third base coming up from our Protoss player, so he should be able to handle this no problem. He's going to take out a bunch of drones in the process. That's a good call. He should have blinked after them, but I guess he didn't want to. That's going to cause a little bit of economic damage, but right now we can see our Zerg player is massing up to go handle that. And our Protoss player is now going to retreat, slowly but surely. I'm just waiting for that Overseer to fly by. Man, those Dark Templars do a tremendous amount of damage. And they should really continue to attack. Oh, looks like they're going to hide or run away. So now we have our Zerg forces massed. And our Protoss force is massed. But nothing really too great. We see Psystorm coming out, so it looks like he built the Robo Facility for almost... I don't know. Ah, oh, that's going to be tough. So he cancels his expansion. The Zerg are just going to go on there. So right now it's three bases to two bases, which is going to give our Zerg player an income advantage. So our Protoss player really needs to take his sort of natural third base... Because he's, he's about to be in trouble. He's got an Overseer out there. Which should allow him to see the third Zerg base. We see even more creeps being, being spread. Always good to see that. So we're going to see what Immortalist does after that. And hopefully he's going to break those rocks down and go for his third finally. He will have to keep that Overseer though. Because he is dropping creep just to prevent that. To see the overseer here in the corner keeping an eye on things. So now that the rocks are down, <laughs> I guess instead of killing the overlord, he decided to build his uh, nexus a little bit out of position. Not a big deal. And now we see he's going to come around in the corner trying to kill that overlord. Not a problem. Almost makes it out. You're going to blink down. So in terms of army size, units tab, production tab. So right now in terms of army supply, it's 107 for our Zerg friend and 51 for our Protoss friend. So with half the army size, he's going to have to struggle to catch up because our Zerg player is getting more and more ahead. He's <laughs> They're both building. So we got Corruptor, six Corruptors coming out. We got Dropships, Templar. Pretty much every unit that our Protoss player can build aside from, I don't know, Colossus are out on the map. But right now we've got Infestors and they are full, almost full with Fungals. It's going to be tough. Reserve player is grabbing the gold, so that'll give him, again, four bases. And a tremendous economic advantage against our Protoss player, who's only on three. Now we can see a whole bunch, 34 Zerglings being built. This is, 
This is going to be interesting. So our main has been pretty much mined out. So he's going to do a drone transfer to his third, which would definitely help his economy. But right now it's 127 to 178. Bad news. One stalker out there in the corner keeping an eye on things. So we have a little bit of a death ball going on, but nothing too major. And there's a lot of Zerg wings. So now we can see all the upgrades are coming. Attack upgrades, Corruptors, Broodlords. This is going to be trouble for our Zerg players. Now we're going to see it's going to... Ooh. I like those high templars doing a tremendous amount of damage with those storms. So a little bit of an army trade here. Unfortunately, it's going to do more damage for our Protoss player than it is for our Zerg player. Those Broodlords are going to come in and just launch Broodlings at those. So those Immortals, very expensive units, are all about to die. And we can see a nice giant line of Zerglings going after the drop. Which is nice, I like that. He did sort of a two-pronged attack. So he was able to do a pretty decent amount of damage to the Zerg player, but not enough. He's still got a tremendous army. He's got some high-spec units there. So we'll see what happens after that. We finally see a bunch more gateways coming down. So both of our players are actually floating a little bit of cash. But finally the massive warp ends. It's going to be interesting to see where we go from here on out. But uh, that is a lot of Zerglings. Three full groups. We've got Corruptors. we got Food Lords. And now we're going to see a push out. So we're going to see where he goes from here. Probably wipe out the gold expansion first. And then we'll see what happens after that. I don't really think that cannon's going to help you, because right now our Zerg player is about to max out, and it's it's just going to be crazy. Now a little bit of engagement here, those stalkers are going to get destroyed. Psy Storm's going down, actually capturing one of his own units. You gotta be careful for that. More Storms going down. Ooh, Storms everywhere. The Fungals, the Void Rays, the Blink Stalkers. Those Roaches are very heavily damaged, but the Void Rays are getting fungled, so it's gonna be tough. He's gotta get some more Zealots in there to tank the damage. He warps in some more. I don't think he got Zealot speed, though. Nope, he didn't get speed, but that's gonna be interesting. Immortalisk actually decides to call GG. And that's gonna be it. Wrong button.